The question I'm going to try and answer here today is actually simple and I'm big on the yes and approach. But more often than not, when people ask questions in Agile, usually they mean a either or. And for this question is just the same. So is Agile a culture thing or a process thing? And that seems to be occupying a lot of minds these days, uh, either with questions from you and with some of my clients. So to the best of my ability, let me take you on a journey and let's get this one answered. So let's start by defining culture. And the definition that I really like is the one that expresses culture is the values and the beliefs that someone has. And those values and the beliefs, they get expressed with behaviors, with action. So when you put that collectively, there is then a, a, a collective culture in place. And that's true for people working at Amazon, that's true for people in your running group. Culture is already there, no matter if you notice, no matter if managers agree with it, uh, the, the culture is there. It might even not be the culture that you want. So regardless, it is there. Now, if you pay attention to this definition of culture, you start seeing that uh, if culture is the expression of the behaviors and the actions that we take based on the values that we hold dear, then you think, well, if I want to transform the ways um, of a company, of a team, of a department, we then, we then are bringing new ways of thinking. We want to think about things differently. We want to hold different values. And yes, it has to also be expressed in doing things differently. So it does have to do with adopting new behaviors. And more importantly, if you don't pay attention to the behaviors, to the expression of the culture in the collective setting, the team, the department, what happens is that you might be saying that you want something in your culture and you end up not um, rewarding in the direction that you want the culture to go. So if you say you want something, but you do something completely opposite to it, that's what we're talking about here. So to be very explicit, you can't have behaviors and you can't have ways of thinking that are at odds with the future direction that you want for your culture, for your company. So if you want people to stop working like crazy 60 hours a week, as an example, you have to stop rewarding people who do that. You have to stop incentivizing the behavior that is against what you want in your culture. If you want people to work 35 hours only a week, what are the things that you need to think about? And therefore, what are the new actions and the new behaviors that we all need to adopt to make sure that this is the new way to go? Because otherwise, change won't stick. If there's a conflict, if there's a dissonance between what you say the culture is in the direction that we, we say we are going versus what we actually do, people will pick up on what we actually do. So here we are really talking about the uh, the piece where the processes do affect the culture. Processes um, on their own, they can be quite strong because they are what people are asked to follow in organizations. And I know in Agile we say, hey, it's people and interactions over processes and tools. But a lot of organizations that are doing the quote unquote Agile transformation, they still come in with a ton of just new processes and people still continue to just follow processes along. So that really the part that we are talking about when processes enter the scene. Processes are just as important. Now, they are important to codify the, the culture that we want or the culture that exists. And that is where the problem usually lies. I know that in Agile, we say that people and interactions are what's most important, but a minimum layer of processes always need to exist. I'm saying minimal layer. That's not exactly what we find, right? In most organizations, sometimes we, we find very heavy, very packed processes. But regardless, what is important to admit is that the processes that we have in place, either because they existed before or because they are new and we, were, we are installing them, they will determine how people actually carry out their work. So we want affinity and not resistance. So if the culture 
thinks of something, we want the processes to implement that thought. We don't want them to be at odds. We want things to, to flow in a direction that makes sense. If there is a dissonance, people will pick up on the dissonance and there will be a lot of frustration and don't even get me started on what happens when people get jaded. So if you're following along so far, you understood culture is the driver. Culture is what's important. Culture defines the direction that we want to go. So we define a value system and a belief system that is aligned with that culture. In order to enact that belief system, we will have new actions. These new actions require new processes. So what happens in there is that we're going to design new processes. We are not just going to tweak or come in with something maybe brand new from somewhere else and install in our current reality. And I think there is usually where we have the problem. The current, I call this the current issue of the agile dream. So agile keeps being sold, especially you know in safe installations and in the world of agile transformation as something that can be carried out as a traditional project and in two or three years we are all transformed. And that is really not a reality. In fact, the transformation will be long, will be the length, the duration of the transformation will be proportional to the dreams of the organization. So if the current uh, space in the organization is that they don't ship it fast, that they don't know how to have uh, inter-team collaboration, um, they don't have, uh, you know, the departments that really work together and they have a lot of gatekeeping uh, and the organization has like 90,000, um, 200,000 people, you can imagine that nothing really fast will happen in two, three years for that organization. So I feel that there is this generalized feeling that Agile can just be installed. And that's usually where the problem is, because in the installations that we have with specific frameworks, we do arrive with pre-formatted processes to be adopted. And while they are great training wheels, that's exactly what they are. And they are supposed to be abandoned at some point in something much more aligned with the reality of the organization needs to be defined. And usually this is co-developed with their people and not just with specialists sitting somewhere, people who don't understand the current, the current reality and thinking and, and what really happens in the organization. So one of the things I feel sometimes, um, maybe in organizations, the executives of, or the managers, maybe they don't necessarily consider and where the coach can come in and help is that, hey, in the end, this is a spectrum. And how far do you want to go? So we should stop selling this Android dream and start thinking about what keeps you up at night and what are things that you want to see happening for your, for your organization and for your teams. And then start the conversation from there. And then the uh, alignment between the culture and the processes will go a lot smoother. So here are my conclusions on this topic. Culture is the driver of the change, not processes. But processes are important to support the change because the processes will reward or um, inhibit certain behaviors at play. So they are the culture enacted in the play field. So that's really an important um, thing to keep in mind. And then the other thing, and you know, that, that can't be neglected as well, is the role of the agile coach, sometimes um, scrum masters or any change agent that, that exists in the organization, either as a contractor or as an employee, is that the person coaching, they have to be bold and they have to be realistic and tap into the integrity. So when you're talking to executives and with managers, define what the future state look like. Define how much is too much. You really need to enter the difficult conversations of how prepared are you to do such and such things if they are required. And there is no shame in doing this tiny little thing towards change. In fact, those things are the best way. A small incremental change is always the best approach. You gain momentum, you collect those wins, you learn how to co-create the next steps with all the people involved, several teams, several departments, if the case. So we absolutely need to have the conversation that is very realistic and it helps our client understand that in the end, adopting 
agile, having an organization that is um, flexible and an organization that knows how to learn. It's not this one big bang step. It's a journey and the journey will start with the first step. So I hope this video was useful for you in answering this question and let me know what you think in the comments or in the blog post. And if you have any other question, just let me know and it can even become the next video. I'll stop right here and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.